just a wireframing tool. This is meant to go from start to end. This is full production. This is just the, the starting point of this. Um, but we kind of get rid of a lot of the tedious uh, design tasks when going forward. So for instance, I have this, this repeat grid uh, of all of these shoes. Now if I have just a folder full of images that I like, I can select all of those uh, shoe images and drop it in this first cell. And it's just going <laughs> to. <laughs> so yeah, it's just going to uh, fully populate that. And when you run out, it'll just kind of repeat itself again. <laughs> um. <laughs> What's that? This is. Yeah, easily. Like, and that's me like narrating this. <laughs> um, so, like, once you and once you see the content getting in there, then you're going to start reacting to some of uh, your design choices. Like, I can't read any of this, so maybe I want to put like a box behind it, or some something really quick. And then, as you can see, it's doing it for all of those things, uh, just really quick, really simple. Uh, and it's not just uh, it's not just images that this works for. So if I have um, so if I have a text file that has, and maybe this is a spreadsheet with all of these, uh, the names of these products on it, I can just take this text file and drop it in here, and it's just going to yeah, update that for you as well. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> same for prices. <laughs> it's free right now. Um, so yeah, so once you start having like this workflow down, you can really pump out quick prototypes and uh, just in a matter of in minutes. Uh, so I actually have, I took this concept a little bit further, just not too much further, but uh, you can see that you can get to a pretty quick fidelity, a pretty quick high fidelity. Uh, I didn't do a whole lot to get to this point. I added an image up here, added this text block. And I, I adjusted some of the typefaces, but since everything, uh, since all of this stuff um, were symbols already, it was all just doing it for me. I only had to do it once, and it was affecting all the other artboards. Uh, and sorry, what was that? Uh, like for IoT prototyping. Mm -hmm. Uh, not yet, but it's definitely things we're considering. We want to we want to get to that point, yeah. but it's not there yet. I, I would love to sign up for a beta for that. Yeah, that would I mean that that's good feedback that we'll we'll keep in mind. And again, this product is still in beta. It's not 1.0 yet, uh, so it's we still have a ton of things we want to do, and um, it's always great to hear that kind of feedback. Um, so just r real quick with this, I'm gonna. This was my kind of end-to-end -end prototype. Oop, I don't think I linked this guy up. but uh, So some more feedback that you might get is, hey, like, what do you do with this search bar? Um, and that's a good point. Like, your developer might want to see what the search bar interaction is. Um, it might be kind of obvious, because iOS does a lot of this for you. Uh, but sometimes you need to give them that level of details. So I can duplicate this artboard. And I can actually go up to File and Open UI Kits. And here we have all of the Apple uh, kits made for you. So I can copy this and paste it uh, right onto this artboard and then link this guy up. So I actually might want to, uh, I'll take this element, I'll link it to this artboard. And I probably want to show that this uh, search bar has a little bit of focus to it. So I'll give it a little blue border, uh, maybe up the pixel, not that much. Um, so when I click on, when I click on this element, it's just going to populate that with it. And because we have all of these like sticker sheets of Apple uh, UI for you, it's it's painless. It takes only a, a couple seconds. Um, and that's kind of the the portion of the demo I wanted to give you guys, just to show you how quick and easy it is. And this question. Yeah. So if I right now I'm using these uh, iOS. Uh, iOS uh, artboards, but over here, uh, I can create custom-sized artboards. But I can also I have this list of different ones like uh, 
Android tablet, Android mobile. Um, so if the tablet over here. So you can do all these different sized dartboards at this time. Uh, and what's really nice about this, and I don't have an iOS cord on me right now, but if I plug this in um, to my phone, I'll actually be able to live preview on my phone with all the like swiping and gestures. And if while I make changes on Canvas, it'll update in real time on my phone. So I can get a really good feel for how this product's actually going to look. Um, and can we like move all the iOS and design to the Android ones without any redesigning them? Uh, roughly. We have some features that are coming out soon that will kind of do that a little bit more seamless, but um, it's not in there yet. You, you can get a kind of rough feel if I copy this to say the mobile one. Um, when you resize things, it's a little wonky. Uh, but we do have, we have some new features that are coming out that are going to kind of be revolutionary. Um, I've played with this app before. Um, but for the iOS like kind of tab structure um, and the header, whenever I turn the scrolling feature on, it moves all of those too. Is there a way to yeah. make that stick? No, so fixed headers and components. Again, not in there, but it's in our roadmap, I promise. Like, that's, that's one of like those features that people are just waiting on, and it's just like we want to get there really quickly. Um, but not quite yet, but very soon. Do you guys have any training or supporting information that kind of helps explain the ins and outs of this stuff? Yeah, so if you, if you download this um, <laughs> and you just go to the learn and support uh, item, let's see if the internet's uh, playing nice now. Uh, we do have. Uh, a list of uh, documents that let you do it, and a lot of YouTube videos are, are out there already. Um, uh, are there any more questions about this while I'm in the app um, before I switch back into kind of? Are there universe design standards? So, like, this is how big your, um, like, tablet or bar should be in your mm -hmm. console, or is it all just like uh, so it depends on what, where you're working. Um, if you're working in a big corporation, and I'll actually get into that with how Adobe Design works. Um, but different uh, companies use different icon sets and different sizes, and okay. it's the human interface guidelines. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see any more hands. I don't know if I did. Yeah. Um, as far as it, as far as XD goes, uh, the best we're doing right now is having these UI kits that you can kind of pull from, and that'll give you a good feel of what the appropriate size for the resolution is. Um, but other than that, we don't. We do get all the uh, templates of the, I mean, the buttons or anything like that, right? Yep. The library is big enough for us to work on the buttons. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a good question. So from Illustrator to XD, it's pretty fluid. Uh, from Photoshop, uh, we're working on, I don't know if you use libraries in, uh, in Photoshop much. We're, we're, that's a new feature that's coming out soon. Uh, and then that will be a really tight integration. So if, I, if you make an edit to a photo in Photoshop, it'll update into XD for you. Yeah. Yeah, you can you can create if you, if it's an Illustrator already, uh, you can probably bring it into here pretty uh, seamlessly and just create an XD document out of it. Uh, and as I was mentioning about the libraries that like Photoshop has, you can also create libraries based off of Illustrator uh, design guidelines, and then you can easily it would actually act pretty similar to how uh, uh, these icons, these symbols are. So you can just drag and then drop, uh, and then all your UI elements just really quickly. Cool. I'm going to move on to the kind of talk part of this, unless there's any other questions. And also, feel free to uh, raise your hand or uh, shout out if you want to ask something. <laughs> 